Welcome to the Words to Empower television broadcast, featuring Frank and Jackie Stewart, pastor and first lady of the Axe Ministries. And now, Frank and Jackie Stewart. Welcome back to the Words to Empower broadcast with Pastor Frank and Lady Jacqueline. We're so glad you joined us on today. We're excited about the Word of God on today, and we are going to dive right into it. And just thanking God for just one more week that he's allowed us to see and being able to see the manifestations of God. Pastor, Amen. what are we going to talk about today? Well, this is a message that have come from the very, uh, I believe, the very core of God's, God's love. And that is, he wants to see us healed. He wants to see us well. He wants to see us prosper. I would that you prosper, be yes, in health, yes, even yes, as your soul, soul prosper. So yes. God dropped us into something on Easter Sunday. Mm -hmm. And we've been just walking through what he has revealed to us in a very powerful way. But also, there was something that, very, that, that was very special and very instrumental in my life that was life-changing that happened to me in the month of May. And it happened in 1985, on May 11th. And do you know what that was? <laughs> yes, I can have a clue. Okay, so <laughs> want to say happy anniversary, 34 happy, years. Happy anniversary, Pastor. Amen. 34 years. 34 years. Marriage, yes. God Amen. is good. Amen. He's good. And we thank Amen. him for his goodness and his mercy. Four kids and... Six grandchildren later. Six grandchildren later, mm -hmm. two churches, mm -hmm. another ministry in, in Little Rock, and the best is yet to come. Yes. We're going to talk about on Easter Sunday, uh, we use as a key verse Psalms 105, 37. He also brought them out with silver and gold, yes. and there was none feeble among them. Mm -hmm. And what this verse says is that they came out of Egypt, and when they came out of slavery, they had silver and gold, and nobody was sick. And wow. we, we named this we named this series, and we've been talking about the month of May, mm -hmm. the month of manifestation, mm -hmm. and now we're, now we're in the month of June, but we label this series Nobody Sick. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to get people to change their level of expectation that if God could bring a whole nation out, wow. two and a half million people, maybe 10 million people, depends on the estimation, yes. and nobody's sick. Nobody's sick. Mm -hmm. But there were some things that happened with the blood of the lamb and them eating the Passover meal, the Seder meal, that when they left out, nobody was sick. No. And we know that blood on the doorpost Mm -hmm. represented Jesus Christ. Yes, it did. Yes. And I, I believe that when the deaf angel saw that blood, mm -hmm. he didn't just see a, a lamb, a regular animal blood. Mm -hmm. He understood that that represented the blood of Jesus yes. because yes. the Bible says he was slain before the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. Because I don't believe just regular animal blood can make death move, but I believe that when it represents that which comes from the very veins of Jesus Christ, I believe that death itself, mm -hmm. death itself, because death had no claim to the blood of Jesus. Right. And I don't right. think we realize it had no claim because the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Right. He had no sin. He had no sin. So legally, he couldn't die. so, so we, we have to understand that when they saw that blood. So, but we want to talk about, and there was non feeble among you. Mm -hmm. Nobody feeble coming out. Mm -hmm. That that would be the whole city of Little Rock and, and North Little Rock. And really, you could say the whole state of Arkansas. It's about three million people in Arkansas. Can you imagine the whole state of Arkansas and every hospital completely empty? No hospitals, no clinics, no urgent care, no, no type of medical facilities whatsoever will be needed. Wow. That's miraculous. That's what God did. Mm -hmm. Now, as you study this, they did get sick because they started talking, murmuring, and murmuring and complaining. And, yes. and many of our sicknesses is connected to our mouth. Yes. And because of that mouth, they weren't able to go into the promised land. Mm -hmm. But we want to talk about this. Uh, no one sick. 
And I want to start in Matthew chapter 12. Uh, this is a miracle that Jesus performed and it was performed on the man who had a withered hand, withered right hand. And Jesus performed a miracle on him. And we want to read this. First lady, if you could read this story and then we will talk about it. And I want you to pay close attention to how Jesus views sickness. This is Matthew chapter 12, verses 9 through 13. And it says in the, King, the New King James Version, it reads, Now when he had departed from there, he went into their synagogue. And behold, there was a man who had a withered hand. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? That they might accuse him, that him is Jesus. Then he said to them, What man is there among you who has one sheep? And if he falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will not lay hold of it and lift it out. He says, How much more valuable than is a man than a sheep? How much more valuable is this man than a sheep? Therefore, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Then he said to the man, stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out and it was restored as whole as the other. This, this, this passage of scripture is so powerful. Mm -hmm. And just a revelation that we've received on this passage of scripture since we started talking about nobody sick. It's not that this, this, this scripture had never been read by us. We, we knew the scripture, mm -hmm. yes. but the revelation and how God has intensified it. There's a man in, in the synagogue, and that's a gathering of believers, so we would call that a church. church. Mm -hmm. He's in this church, and his hand is withered. I don't believe it just had withered. I believe it just like the woman that was bowed together. I believe it had been withered for years. And other gospel, one of the other gospel writers says to us that it was his right hand. Yes. So when you think about that, his right hand is withered. Most people are right-handed. So he had been called for a purpose in this world, a job to do before he came into the world. Something had happened or he, something had happened, whether in birth or in a womb, whatever. This hindered him from doing what God had ordained him to do. Everybody that's born into this world is born with a purpose. Mm -hmm. But his right hand is withered and he's sitting in church. He's doing the right thing. He's, he's at church and Jesus comes to church. Jesus comes to church and when he comes in, he tells the man to stretch forth his hand. And they begin to ask the Lord, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? Because here you got these people, these self-righteous people, they hear and the Bible says they wanted to accuse him. He's trying to crucify him. They're trying to kill him because his church was getting bigger than their church. And even Pilate said, even the Bible says Pilate knew they delivered him because of jealousy. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to trap him. That's, this is a religious trap. Yeah. And they ask him a question trying to trap him because they realized how much he loved humanity, how much he loved people. And he was always, always around the poor and, and the sick and the needy, and he was blessing them and helping them. So, so they knew they could trap him because of his love. So this man was sick. They asked, they asked Jesus, uh, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? And then Jesus began to talk about, and, and I like this, this is the revelation. Jesus began to talk about a, Sheep in a pit, mm -hmm. sheep in a pit, mm -hmm. and, and, and this reveals to us what he thought about sickness, because they're talking about they're talking about uh, this man being made well. Jesus started talking about a sheep in a pit. Now he calls them hypocrites because they would lift a sheep out of a pit on the Sabbath, mm -hmm. and Jesus is comparing sickness to a pit. I think sometimes even for us to understand, we have to have a visual picture sometimes. Yes. We just can't jump straight into the spirit and understand That's what good. God is saying in the spirit to us 
in the spirit realm many times. God has to use a natural analogy, something that we're familiar with, right. something that we even do, something that we experience, something that we have, something that we use, something that's our occupation. Jesus would often use parables and speak to people to get them to understand a spiritual meaning. Yes. And so he goes to something that they have, something right. that they own, something that they would normally do. They, yes, they were doing this. To let them see you're being hypocritical. You know, if you just tell somebody they're a hypocrite, you know, they feel like you're just calling them a name. But if they can explain it to you where you can see. Right. I am actually being a hypocrite. I am being something that I really didn't consider myself. Right, right. So he uses this sheep that they will go out even on the Sabbath if they have it on an animal and it falls into a pit, it falls into a ditch, it gets into a place that it can't get itself out of. Right, right. You're going to help an animal that's not even in the covenant, that's not even a part of the nation of Israel. They're not your brother or your sister. They're not even in the family of God. And you're going to help a sheep but you won't help a sister in Christ. You won't help a daughter of Zion. You won't help a daughter of Abraham. And he said, now that doesn't measure up. Now I know we get into animal rights and all that in our day and time. And we, we will not um, do things thinking that we're helping animals, but, but we in, in the process, we're hurting humans. Right. But God is, God is saying, even in this, in, even in this gospel, that I need you to understand that a man is more valuable to God than a sheep. A woman is more valuable to God than an animal. Yes, yes, yes. They don't have souls. We're creating the image and likeness yes. of God. I, you know, when you look at this, this is so powerful, and we could spend the next two weeks, three weeks on just this. Because it is so much being said here. Yes. He's comparing sickness to a ditch, mm -hmm. sickness to a pit. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the, look at this, what they're asking Jesus to do. Notice now they ask him, was it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? Mm -hmm. Is it lawful to heal this man today? Mm -hmm. Now, on the Sabbath, you wouldn't walk past a sheep in a ditch. Right. Your sheep in a ditch, mm -hmm. you wouldn't walk past it. But you want Jesus to walk past one of his children mm -hmm. in a ditch. Wow. See, that's not who he is. Mm -mm. You want him to wait till the next day. But you wouldn't wait till the next day, even with an animal. Now, now, now be mindful. We're not talking about it. It's going to kill the animal. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about the threat of, of, of death. Very possible, you know, you get them out tomorrow, but they didn't want the animal to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But Jesus, they're asking Jesus to walk past one of his children, mm -hmm. a person he created who's in a ditch, in a pit, because he's saying sickness is a pit. And when we look at it, we, we need to explore that, how sickness is a pit or a ditch. And we'll, we'll talk about that, but you had something. And I was thinking... You know, his hand is withered. This man's hand is withered. And he only has the use of one hand. Right. And it's, and it's the weaker hand. Yes. Most of us, we don't understand how blessed we are to even have two hands until something happens to one of them where we're unable to use the other hand. If we burn it or if we sprain it or if we, you know, um, injure it in some way or shape, form or fashion, and we're only able to use one hand, we realize how difficult life becomes. We recognize how hard things are for us to do if we only have just one hand. And so the, it's like our compassion, our, our love, our, our desire to help, it just has gone out of the window to obey a law, to, yes. to, to obey a tradition, to, to, to do the the status pro, you know, to do what's always been done. And the thing about it is, and what he's trying to show them, this was never the law. 
Right. This was this was you being a hypocrite and your traditions. You know, why would the law say you can get a sheep out, but you can't get a man out? Mm -hmm. They're asking God, manifest in the flesh, Jesus Christ. They're asking him to do something that he is not capable of doing. Mm -hmm. You asking him to look the other way. Now, you, you, you have to think about that because, see, this is why we don't receive everything we need to receive from God. You asking him to walk past one of his children in a ditch. Now, think about that. If you had a child in the ditch and you could get the child out the ditch, but you're going to walk past him and wait till tomorrow, the next day. And then you just think about you asking love. He, God is love. You asking love itself. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten mm -hmm. son. Jesus is going to give his life. We know he is love. You just ask love to walk past a man that he created in a ditch and to leave him there. And, and not just a man, but a man created in his likeness and his image. Yes. A man created to be his representative here on earth. A man that, that he's wanting to use, wanting to empower wanting to, to give the authority to. But we see how far man has fallen when we, when, we, when we see how far we are away from the love of God and how God does things. I want to take a break right here, and I want you to look at these messages. we got some very important events coming up that you don't want to miss. So yes. please stay tuned and listen to these following messages, and we'll be right back. Amen. So she thought the resurrection was an event or a time. Do we need bigger you start getting in Christ? And you start impacting everything around you. You start impacting the container that would you was put. Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. My name is Frank Stewart. And I'm Jacqueline Stewart. We want to invite you to our program. I am the pastor of Acts Ministries, located in Conway, Arkansas, and also in North La Rock, Arkansas. So join us every Sunday at 4 p.m. right here on VTN for our Words to Empower television broadcast. Welcome back, and, and hope you, you looked at those messages because they're very, very important to us. But we're, we're looking at how Jesus views sickness. Mm -hmm. This is life changing. Yes. This, this changes everything. Yes. Because Jesus views sickness as a person in a ditch. Now, think about it. The, the Bible says, the Bible says that, uh, he says to Jeremiah in, in the book of Jeremiah chapter 1, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Mm -hmm. Okay? I knew you and I ordained you. I sent you here with a purpose. You know, Jesus said, Jesus said, for this cause came I into the world. So we're born with a purpose. It all ties in. We're born with a purpose. Now, in order to fulfill that purpose that God has created and sent me in this world to fulfill, I'm going to fulfill that purpose if I'm in a ditch, can't. if I'm in the pit of finance or the pit of sickness. Now, Israel, we talk about nobody's sick and they came out with silver and gold. The whole purpose was that for them to establish his covenant. He says that mm -hmm. I am the God that giveth you wealth. Mm -hmm. I gave you wealth. Why? To, to, wealth. Yeah, yes. to, to establish yes. my covenant. Mm -hmm. I did, I did this so you could, you could do something with it, you know, but it's hard to do that. It's hard to fulfill what God has ordained for us to fulfill 
if we're in a pit. Mm-hmm. So you kind of gave an analogy just now of being in a pit of finance or a pit of sickness, a pit of disease, a pit of depression. Yeah. You know, a, yes. a pit um, designed to stop you from doing the will of God. When Joseph's brothers threw him in the pit in the Old Testament, um, they were trying to stop the influence that God put on him. They were trying to stop him from becoming um, what his dream said he was going to be. And so the enemy wants to stop us and detour us and to keep us from doing the will of God by um, encompassing us and, and closing us in these pits. Yes. And yes. so when we understand that it's not God's will, he says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper, that you be in health, even as your soul prospers. It's God's desire to gift us the kingdom, and it's his desire to use us for his honor and for his glory. But he can't do that when we're in a pit. Absolutely. And, and when you just realize that, just think about that. I mean, and you have to think about this. This, 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 is, this is what the Bible says, that if you meditate on his word day and night, mm-hmm. it will, you will make your way. Prosper. And you will have good success. You will do that, but you gotta you gotta meditate. When you start thinking about when in sickness and in poverty, it's like being in a pit. And we're asking him to walk past us. You're asking Jesus. Now 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 what the enemy does to us, he'll say to us, Well, you dug the you 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 made the pit, you dug the pit, and so forth. You made your bed so lion. But it doesn't matter. Because love Mm-hmm. They're asking love to do something that's not possible. Mm-hmm. They're asking to wait. Wait till the next day. And, and Jesus, you know, he's full of compassion. When he saw the multitude in the wilderness, and he said they're like sheep not having a shepherd. He said, these, these people, they're hungry. Yes. God's yes. even concerned about us being fed spiritually. Yes. Not just spiritually, but he's concerned about us even having the natural substance that we need because we live in his body. Right. He wants us healthy. He wants us blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when we come, blessed when we go out of our houses. He said, I even want your children blessed. Yes. Your meeting bowl in your basket. That's all my groceries, everything in my cupboard, in my refrigerator, everything in my house. He wants me blessed. That's what he wants for me. And when I understand that's his will for me, I want to come into covenant agreement with what God said. I want what God says I can have. I want to be who God says I can be. I want to do what God says I can do. And that's the covenant we have. We'll get it. We'll get into that as we flow into that because all this ties together. Mm-hmm. It all ties together. I gave you that so you could establish my covenant. He, he says that to Israel. Yes. And we're talking about the Abrahamic covenant. Mm-hmm. You know, when you think about the Abrahamic covenant, it just talks about his love. Mm-hmm. Man was breaking covenant. Adam and they broke their covenant. Don't eat from this tree. It was an agreement. You can do, have all this. Do this. Do this. Don't eat from the tree. He broke their covenant. When you come to the Abrahamic covenant, God then God 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 swore by Himself. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna fix it where you're not gonna be able to break this. I'm gonna fix it where I'm gonna be able to bless you. But when he when you look at him viewing sickness as being in a ditch. It changes your perspective. Yes, yes, it does. And and for these people here, they're asking him to walk past somebody in a ditch that he loved, that he created, and just ignore them. Blind Bartimaeus. <laughs> he was blind. That's a ditch. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. You know... Jesus, Jesus is going to stop. Yes. When, when he, he sees us, he knows us. And when we have a desire to be here, when we, have a, 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 when we want to get in touch with God, when we want to hear from God, when we want um, a manifestation from God, God is not going to turn a deaf ear to us. You know, sometimes we act like we don't hear people. Right. You know, right. people, I'm, I'm t- we say things like, I ain't going to let you worry me. You worrisome. You, you know, you always, you know, wanting something. You needful. You, you needy. You this. You that. You know, and when people say things like that. You again. <laughs> right. Um, what you want now? You yeah. know. Yeah. 
God doesn't treat us like that. He tells us to come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace in our, and help in our time of need. God told us to come. He, yes. he extended that invitation to us because he wants us to come to the throne of grace. He wants us to come to him in prayer. He wants us to seek so that we can find and knock so the door can be opened. He wants us to be persistent like right. a widow. He wants, right. he doesn't, he doesn't want to walk by us. He doesn't want to turn no, a deaf no, ear to us. No, he doesn't no. want to act like he didn't hear us. He said, before I, before I call, God said, I'm going to answer you. He said, before you call, he says, I'll answer you. And he wants to bless us. He wants to give us the kingdom. Right. And not knowing that, not knowing that he's loved. And, and, when you look at the children of Israel in the wilderness, mm -hmm. their unbelief. And, you know, growing up, I would read that story, and I was like, well, they, just, they just didn't believe why there's so, uh, so much of a big deal to God. Well, when you don't believe, you accuse God of not loving. Mm -hmm. You accuse him of not loving. Mm -hmm. That's not who he is. No. It's not who he is. God is love. Yes. Not only is love of God, God is love. We're going to sonify. Yes. It's time for us to pray, First Lady. Mm -hmm. We want to pray that this word that we just spoken mm -hmm. will be manifest yes. in your life. Yes. Will you lead us in prayer? Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to study your word. Lord God, we thank you for all those who are listening today. Father, we're asking that you grant unto them a special blessing, Father. Help them to realize and to see, Father, beyond any shadow of a doubt that it's your will for us to be prosperous, to be in health, for our souls to prosper, and Lord God, for there not to be any sick among us. Lord God, help us to speak your word, declaring and decreeing, so that it can be established by you, God. Manifest in the name of Jesus. Until next time, Father, bless us and make yes. us a blessing. In Jesus' name, Jesus amen, name. amen. Stay right there because we're coming right back and we're going to continue this and move right into part two of Nobody's Sick. So stay right there. We'll be right back. We would love you to partner with our ministry. Please go to our website, axeministriesonline.org, and find out how you can partner with us. For your gifts, please click on the Donate Online button or text the amount you wish to give to 501-302-4242. The Axe Ministries is located at 1423 Ingram in Conway, And 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock. Call 501-329-2055 or go to axeministriesonline.org for more information.